Wibbly wobbly, tiny. Belt out of watches. I guess you could say it was a waste of time. Good heavens, look at the time. Cheers, love the cavalry. 6.30 is the best time. Hands down. Time to talk about Wanda. Day by day, we're all running out of time. Watches. You could say I've got a lot of time on my hand. Time is a tool that you put on the wall. Great. Now that I've got all that off my chest, we can just get on with things. With no pun-related distractions. Mmm, probably. Wanda is the fifth, and actually the final DLC character, for an indefinite amount of time. I know that I, along with plenty of others, have been anxiously awaiting the addition of the last character for a while now. With the previous 3.5 DLC characters all being quite drastic additions to the game, fundamentally changing up the way you play the game with varying degrees of success, it made sense that whoever the final character was would continue this philosophy, perhaps to an extreme degree. And Wanda successfully manages to do exactly that. <laughs> As opposed to taking damage straight to a health bar, which can then be healed via certain items, foods, or structures, Wanda ages rapidly and must rewind time using a particular pocket watch in order to prevent a premature, post-mature death. Taking damage will also add a large number of years to Wanda's age counter, which makes it act as a sort of reverse health bar. And this is an excellent way to make a character that don't starve. Health is something that you're pretty much always concerned with as a player. Be it in the early game, the thought of going to fill up your water bottle while standing on top of a tentacle, or forgetting which character you're playing, whatever other clumsy shenanigans you can think of is always present in the back of your mind. Or conversely, be it in the late game, when you might be preparing to take on a particularly difficult raid boss, the thought of perishing is always with you. And although there have been characters who change the ways in which you heal, notably Warthogs dependent on souls instead of physical foods, and Wirt unable to eat meats, a category that contains many potent healing items. But no character has ever changed how the health bar itself functions, and that's what's primarily so intriguing about Wanda. Throughout the game, no matter your personal playstyle, she is going to change the way in which you interact with the game world and go about things. I've discussed in videos before why characters who change the ways in which you play the game are the most effective, but to put it simply, it's because they're more fun. If you want to be pedantic about the definition of a gimmick, Yes, technically Wanda is a gimmick character, but it's a well-designed gimmick that constantly makes you rethink and change your approach to playing the game, as opposed to a one-trick pony, novelty over quality, quick dopamine burst type deal. Which thereby makes it not a gimmick? Ah, uh, semantics. Wanda is fun because playing her is unlike playing quite literally anything else in the Don't Starve franchise. It challenges what the typical player is used to, and it forces them to be a bit creative. To a beginner, Wanda would also be considered a more difficult character, which also aids in making her an enjoyable experience. As Wanda, gone are the days of repetitive strategies that revolve around spamming the same resource over and over and over again to attain success. Wanda is mostly capped in how much she can heal in every situation, which forces her players to be a bit more skilled in the game in order to avoid death. This is aided by some of the tools in her kit, namely the backstep watch, which gives her the ability to step backwards through time with a distance dependent on her age, giving her some brief invincibility frames, and a repositioning which can be advantageous if used correctly. <laughs> So obviously Wanda has her health-related quirks, but it's not just the ways that she must restore health alone that makes her interesting. Because if that was the case, you could simply stay young, or in other words, at full health, all the time and never experience any consequences. No, what really makes Wanda's mechanics shine are the benefits she gains from being of old age, denoted when her age is above 65 and below 80. Most of the changes that occur are relatively minor, reducing Wanda's affinity for dumb labor and reducing her crafting speed and damage with physical weapons. However, while in this state, any damage Wanda deals with shadow weapons is increased, and she no longer suffers sanity penalties for interacting with most shadow-themed items. You know, that thing that most elderly people experience? This will mean that the Dark Sword jumps up to 119 damage, allowing Wanda to one-shot trash mobs and generally be better against stronger targets. However, you've probably never seen a Wanda player actually use a Dark Sword, and let it be known that there is a good reason for that. One of Wanda's clocks she's able to craft is the Alarming Clock, if you can call a sword blade on a chain a clock. The Alarming Clock is a shadow weapon, meaning that it benefits from Wanda's age bonus, but not only that, it has drastically increased range over other weapons, similar to the Cat-09 Tails. This allows Wanda to dish out a massive 142 damage per hit when she's old, a bite with a slightly slower attack animation at a decent distance, which allows her to keep mostly out of harm's way in her frail old form. This ability and item combination I absolutely love. It encourages players to get out of their comfort zone, and intentionally put themselves at a greater risk for reward. A glass cannon if you like. This makes Wanda an absolute beast when pitched against nearly any mob that you can throw at her, and quite a fair few bosses, with the obvious caveat that should you mess up, you are more often than not completely fucked. You can of course stay in middle age form in order to be much safer, but nearly cut your DPS in half, or even switch between the two mid-combat if you have enough healing, or feel confident enough to intentionally take damage. Even while in middle age form, 97 damage per hit is certainly nothing to scoff at, which means that the choice to sacrifice DPS for survivability is always present, which gives players agency throughout the game. All of these abilities and changes just make playing Wanda so satisfying. 
from everything to the control you get over how you play, the risks you're encouraged to take, and even small things like the visual and auditory effects of the alarming clock and when Wanda transitions between ages. Wanda also has a couple of other items to aid her in her travels. The Second Chance Watch and the Backtrack Watch. The Second Chancer allows her to revive an ally by using it as a Telltale Heart, which will revive them with no max health penalty the only cost being a 4 minute cooldown. If a ghost haunts it while it's on the ground, it'll break, dropping half of its crafting resources, including the valuable timepieces. This item turns Wanda into a powerful out of combat support character, especially in combination with her other clocks. The backtrack watch allows Wanda to set an anchor point anywhere on the map. This point is permanently associated with this particular clock, unless of course the watch is disassembled using the clockmaker's tools. Upon using it, Wanda will teleport to the anchor point, no matter where she is, be it somewhere on the mainland, lost at sea, or even in a different shard. This revolutionary device can effectively cut travel time in half. Later on in the game, when you have Thulosite coming out of your ears, you can even make an elaborate teleportation network around the map, as backtrack watches can be used while inside chests. By combining a purple gem with this watch, it can temporarily be upgraded to the Rift Watch, a version which creates a temporary wormhole, allowing other players to jump through. Although this upgrade consumes a purple gem and requires a lot of coordination to utilize effectively, being able to transport an entire team from one side of the map to the other is certainly nothing to be scoffed at. Wanda is probably the most fun I've ever had playing a Don't Starve character. Every part of her character is very well designed, and she has very little bloat or unnecessary mini perks, much unlike some previous other characters I could name. Her addition definitely makes me quite excited for the remainder of the character refreshes, particularly Maxwell, since Wanda has sort of nicely borrowed some of Maxwell's niches, namely his glass cannon playstyle, shadow magic theme, and his position as the one true old person. In fact, while playing as Wanda, a lot of the other characters just feel like they're lacking in substance. Warthogs in particular also feels a bit less unique, since he and Wanda both possess teleportation-based abilities and health bar-changing gimmicks. When Warthogs first came out, teleporting around like a mad thing was the most fun thing, but now Wanda can do it for free, albeit only backwards or to set locations. And believe me, I know it seems a bit nonsensical to complain about Wanda because she makes other characters feel bland, but, but that is seriously one of the only negative things to be said about her. Don't take this as an actual critique, obviously that's not actually a reason to dislike something. Well, movie A was so incredible, but I just can't let myself enjoy it. Because movie B used to be cool, but now it's not. Either way, I still think this perspective is worth considering. If anything, it's all the more reason to anticipate future reworks for characters. For those who are new have already received their rework, well, sad as it is, some of them just aren't as interesting as Wanda, able to be thoroughly engaging throughout all stages of the game, and unlikely as it may be, it would definitely be interesting to see some of these characters get a second revisiting, although that's probably nothing more than wishful thinking. There's also the topic of whether or not Wanda is overpowered, and to be frank, personally, I don't really care. As long as a character does not completely break the game, it's generally going to be fine by me. That being said, there's no doubt that Wanda is extremely powerful, with a DPS that can rival everyone's favourite mustachio of Muscle Man, but I definitely wouldn't say overpowered. Try calling her overpowered after repeatedly dying to a boss, just because you messed up a cutting pattern once or twice. She takes skill to play, at least when fighting raid bosses. If there's one thing she might be a teeny tiny bit too good at, it's day-to-day -day combats that don't last very long, such as killing pigs for their skin, dealing with tree guards whenever they spawn, and defending oneself from hound attacks. Because of the extra range and extreme damage of the alarming clock, a lot of encounters such as this barely last a few seconds, and you can easily get away with simply just holding down F, and maybe the occasional dodge. This makes Wanda suffer from a similar problem that Wolfgang does, where small combats such as this just become a bit boring, providing near to no difficulty and also becoming a bit trivial. Contrary to Wolfgang of course, boss combats are extremely tense which makes them much more enjoyable. In the end you can probably pin Wanda's new label as overpowered, on the DST community's tendency to label everything new and unfamiliar as such. A logic that makes no sense, because if everyone's overpowered, no one will be. All in all, there really is barely anything to complain about with Wanda. She's simply such a well-designed and well-rounded character. If there's one DLC character you should weave, it's her. Especially if you're sick of the regular gameplay loop like I was, and just might need something to shake things up. Thanks a lot for watching this video. It was definitely a bit shorter than a usual one, but there really isn't much to say about Wanda on the negative side of things, which, as a cave-dwelling rant Sony YouTuber, means that she sucks, because I can't amplify my echo chamber of hatred and feed off the resulting controversy. Jokes aside, she's great. You should get her if you're a bit bored of things, or just want something fun. Please feel free to leave a comment with your thoughts on Wanda or the video. If you need a lot of some steam about the aggravating amount of time puns which circulate the community at the moment, now's the time. This is a pun-free space. Anyway, hope you liked the video. If you want to engage with it in order to please Overlord Wojcicki, that will be very much appreciated. For now, see you another time.